Jesus Christ, you don't know the rules? There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully reboot the Scream franchise. For instance, number one. You can never ever work with Harvey Weinstein again. No, no, big no, no, big no, no. Miramax is done, it's over. Number two, you can't just keep leaning in on irony, postmodernism and meta humor. It, it's, it's been done, it's way played out and you went in too hard on that in Scream 4 anyway. You're gonna have to find a fresh angle. Number three, never, ever, under any circumstances, decide to do a woke reboot. Because it'll be god awful. Have an aneurysm, why don't you? Randy's sister. Yeah, I get to tell. Martha, what are you doing here? There's something you guys should see. So Scream 5 is finally happening, and the big channel seem to be really hyped about it. And uh, I'm not. I can't get on the hype train. And not because of English Reserve, but because Scream 5 is a really bad idea. Do not believe the hype. Stick around and I will fill your heart with cynicism. So I said Scream 5 was long delayed, and that's kind of true, but the thing is the phrase long delayed implies that a lot of people were waiting for this. Were you desperate for more? Did we need another? What I'm saying is everything was wrapped up for Sydney, Dewey and Gale at the end of Scream 3. Is Scream 5 really where we want to put our effort? This is the main thing to ask ourselves, and it's as crucial to Scream 4 as it is to Scream 5 as it is to any franchise. What is the point of another movie? Spoilers incoming. It's good to ask what was the point of Scream because the answer is really good. I need to take a few minutes here, but it is worth it, even if it's kind of familiar to you as a fan of horror. If you're not a fan of horror, this might be new information. Either way, it could be a new perspective. Let's go with it. Let me be clear, way back in 1996, where I first saw it, Scream was a revelation. 24 years ago, Scream came out and effectively it was a wake up call, a revolution, a call to action and a kick up the ass to a horror industry that had been kind of lazy and just pumping out derivative sequels with masked killers for about a decade. The horror genre needed Scream. So Kevin Williamson, fresh from making an in-genre critique of teen shows, uh, Dawson's Creek, uh, turned his attention to horror movies and made a critique of slasher films via the medium of a really good slasher film. You know, this was genre aware before that was overplayed. In 1996, it comes out and it beats Funny Games and Buffy the Vampire Slayer to the screen by a year. I like to think it probably gave a sense of direction to both of those projects, as different as they are. Essentially, Scream called out horror movies for being lazy and repetitive, but it showed that the genre could still be amazing. Now, Scream was deservedly a huge hit, so time to make a sequel. Now, making a sequel to Scream is obviously going to be controversial, like Scream is in part a critique of derivative sequels. So can you make Scream 2 without being a hypocrite? Hell yes, you can by going a little meta and uh, focusing your commentary on sequels. Now, Scream 3, that is more of a reach, okay? It's not essential, but I would like to make the case that Actually, Scream 3 is kind of subtly brilliant. I might lose some of you here, but try and stick with me. Scream 2 has come out and it's focused on the world of sequels. If you want to make another sequel, uh, where do you go without retreading ground? Scream 3 very intelligently started to look at the behind the scenes of movie making. Yes, I like it's super meta, but it was a great way to sort of sidestep the obvious problem. Scream 3 took us to the making of horror films. Yes, it was intensely meta. It was a seriously clever move. It showed the sort of artificial trauma of the stab movies against Sydney's much more sincere trauma, reminding us that horror can be done well and it can have a serious impact. But most importantly of all, Scream 3 brought up Me Too issues and the problems of the casting couch and abuse within Hollywood 15 years before everything really kicked off about that. A significant part in that campaign was played by the first Scream's Rose McGowan. This is very well known. It's like poetry. 
it rhymes. And naturally, I need to point out the monster behind the curtain, Harvey Weinstein, who was an executive producer for the first four Scream films. Now, when Scream 3 is focusing on the evil of abuse of power in executive studios, it's not the loud, clear and direct denunciation that Harvey Weinstein deserved, but it was a move in the right direction, I think. It was once again a way for the Scream franchise to show that it was ahead of the curve. Now, super importantly for Scream 5, what did Scream 4 bring to the table? I think I can show you best by focusing just on the start of the movie, because it is really telling and I don't think in a way that was intended. If you've seen beyond the first Scream, then you know that the Scream franchise has its own sort of itchy and scratchy or Terence and Philip in the Stab series, the movie within a movie that is a parody of Scream. Essentially, the it's the low rent version of Scream. You know, this allows for a lot of cute jokes and meta humor. One thing that's very notable is that the Stab series uh, overtakes the Scream series. Um, in Scream 3, just as that is unfolding, they are already making Stab 3, which I think is a really cute joke about the sort of prolific nature of these franchises and how quickly they were pushing films out. So in Scream 4, in a double fake out, we find out that Stab is on its seventh instalment at this point. This whole beginning section undoes Scream 4. Let's go through it and I'll show you how. We're gonna go scary. Saw 4. Ugh, I saw that in theaters. It sucks. It's not scary. It's gross. I hate all that torture porn shit. How do you really feel? Well, I like Jigsaw. I think he kills people very creatively. But you don't give a shit who dies because there's no character development. There's just body parts ripping and blood spewing. Oh. So listen to that. They attack torture porn as a genre, and that's acknowledging tacitly that horror has actually long since moved on. And they're also highlighting the problem of insufficient character development, but I mean, that's quite the rod that they've made for their own back there. It's, aside from character development, what about character resolution? What I'm saying is Sydney's character was developed and had a character arc that was definitely completed by the end of Scream 3. This very film is risking undoing character development. They really set themselves up for a fall here. So then we go into the second section. Fucking kidding me. What? That was so fucking stupid. Pure horseshit. The death of horror right here in front of us. I jumped. It scared me. A fucking Facebook killer? You're kidding me, right? I guess now it would be Twitter that make more sense. A bunch of articulate teens sit around and deconstruct horror movies until Ghostface kills them one by one. It's been done to death. Now, that's just reinforcing the problem. These references to postmodernism and overthinking, they're raising these questions ironically, but you know you have to, you've got to answer these questions. Why make this movie? Like, what are you adding? You can raise it ironically, but it is a real question. Now shut the fuck up and watch the movie. Shan't. No way. That's my whole MO. That's my whole channel here. If they are starting Scream 4 by not so subtly saying that we need to turn our brains off to enjoy horror, well then, that's undoing the whole message of Scream. We are back to pre-Scream times. Yeah, maybe they're just being ironic though. But that's a problem right at the start. You've got all these levels of irony and abstraction. And so what's the film actually saying? Like Scream was deep and complex and had a whole bunch of messages and was very well observed. Can you say that here? What is Scream 4 really telling you? To me, it comes off as insecure. Like they know there are these huge problems with the films. Are they going to fix them? No, they just front load the criticism by hanging a lampshade on it, being like, yeah, we know this is a problem. Well, if you know the problem, why don't you fix them? That's what the Scream franchise is about. I guess what I'm trying to say is it, that it is easy to hide behind irony, but if there's no sincere substance, then this isn't a Scream movie. This is Stab. 
Hey assholes, there are seven of these movies. There is no way everyone is sitting here for 12 hours. Not a chance. My, my disbelief is no longer suspended, sir. No, you lost me. You know, aside from all the irony and... You're gonna get on me there, Gattis. Okay. Very acceptable. Again, you've got to ask, what was the point of Scream 4? Metahuman irony aside, you know, what were they focusing on? What hasn't already been covered by the other films? Scream 4 was made after about a decade of remaking and rebooting any horror movie with any kind of name recognition. So effectively, Scream 4 had to look at that. There wasn't really any territory left. What does it actually have to say about that? You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Like, I had to lay all that out to show why Scream 5 is going to fall flat. So the Scream franchise exists to call out laziness, bad writing, and just general crappiness in the horror genre. They've covered the generalities and cliches, they've looked at sequels already, they've gone behind the scenes, and they've already done the reboots. So where can Scream 5 go? What can they cover without just redoing old ground? Are you just going to wink at the camera and do reboots again? There are two final problems that we have to look at when we're thinking about Scream 5, okay? Number one, as with Scream 4 in 2011, the horror genre at the moment is just not in Scream's territory, okay? It's a lot more focused on the supernatural, heavy on hauntings, found footage may be over, but horror is still not really where Scream is at. I mean, they can genre hop, but that's even weirder, and is Scream 5 just going to rip on the Conjuring series? Clearly not because of problem two. This is the fourth Scream sequel. Are they going to tell the Conjuring series that it outstayed its welcome? You know, they're four sequels in now from a series that started criticizing excessive and derivative franchises. Where can they go? They... Congratulations, you played yourself. After Scream 4, Scream's just become what it's mocked already. You know, the franchise started off mocking derivative sequels and overlong franchises, and here we go. And okay, it's not much information, but the synopsis that got leaked says we're going back to Woodsboro. Again. Damn it, Sydney, at this point in the franchise, Leprechaun had already gone into space and the hood twice. Show some ambition. I guess I just don't see anywhere that Scream 5 can go, except going woke. And that's the last thing we need. At this point, having thought about it and with the knowledge of what the Scream franchise is all about, I, I can't get excited. You know, where is Scream 5 going to go? At this point, it's just going to be stab. Do not believe the hype. Do not get excited. Tell the big channels off for hyping what is clearly going to be a terrible film, pour yourself an old-fashioned, and watch something a heck of a lot better. Cheers, y'all.